So how do you receive them? Here, this way. Uh, here, they come to the Ghent They get post. mailed. Yeah, they come to the Ghent post office and they're forwarded to here. Okay. So they arrive as and then I uh, take a check them. in your mail? Excuse me? They arrive in your mail as, what, a check or something like that? Yeah, they were, it's a check. It, this is what it looks like. Yeah, that's what these were. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are what show up every month now. Yeah, I'm going to give you better copies sure. when they come in. Mm -hmm. But And then I take them to... And Hattie used to cash them for me. Hattie had a huge checking account. So she used to cash about $2,300 a month for mm. me. But uh, she moved. Mm. So that lets me... Yeah. And all my other friends are poor. They're so poor they couldn't cash them. I asked Barbara to cash them. I asked... Uh, George to cash him. They didn't have the money. Only good old Hattie, 87 year old Hattie. Had yeah, the money. I, I couldn't cash that either. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that's when I opened the account at Kinderhook. Right, okay. And I take them over there and I just put them in the account. Okay, so that's that's what you're doing then, is taking it over down the street to Kinderhook. And, okay. Yeah. So why don't you take the rest out of Chase and put it in Kinderhook then? Why don't why I? Do, yeah, why do you continue to leave it there? Well, uh, you might have a problem extricating in the future too. Well, yeah. first of all, I have a friendship with Galasso. Okay. We've known each other for ten years, and also Galasso is our sponsor in uh, Newtown. You know how you send it to Newtown, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And also, that's where the uh, trust is is listed. That's the bank it's listed in. In in the instructions here, or in the trust at the museum. No, what I'm saying is. Remember, it was Karen Glasso and I who built the trust in mm -hmm. the uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Yes. So that's where the papers are. Oh. Mm, fun. So that's three reasons. Yeah. Friendship, uh, sponsorship of my show, and uh, the trust fund. Yeah. Well, hopefully the trust will be perfectly accessible and not have problems like you did with that. Well, you don't even have to worry about it. Because you're going to know where the money is. And nobody else has to know about it. I mean, the trustees are going to know where the money is. Nobody else has to know. Mm -hmm. uh, you read that part. Remember the part of this that you read? It said that there's no probate. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to go into the county clerk. Because right. it's a living trust. Somebody dies, but the trust doesn't die. Right. It goes on to living people. It's a continuation. It's a living trust. Yes. So now what was your question? That you wouldn't have any problem with the bank and the trust? Yeah, if you moved, uh, if, if it's going to continue to operate fine, that's fine. Yeah. But you had a problem with the procedure. Well, really, the bank is not in it much anymore. Okay. Where were we? Glenn uh, North service list. list. Service list. Charles Daniel Schoonover, uh, Marjorie Duden. Mary Tom Elizabeth Kilmer, Dorothy Kennett, Brad Sachs. You Shannon. know who kills her is, right? The neighbor to the north? Mm hmm. Yep. Shannon and her Lester. sister is where Jimmy lives? Right. Victoria Cortese, Andrew Lynn, uh, Andrew Herzman, Gregory Washburn, George and Lynn Dixon, Barbara and Walter Slater, Reverend James and Krista Slater, Stephen and Terry Folsom, Scott and Andrew Folsom, and Lee and Ann, Ralph Edward Folsom, and John. Gordon Howard Folsom, Karen Glasso, Kirk Dixon. Karen Glasso is the banker. Ah, uh, okay. James and Bonnie Dunn. Hattie Seeger. Yeah, she's the one. Sarah and John Schubert. She's moved up to Clifton Park. Oh, okay. It's a Lutheran home. And Jacqueline Dixon Buckner. And Jacqueline, you know who she is. I think she, so. She's George Dixon's oh. twin sister. She's the one I went to Troy with. She works for the Agency for Independent Living, the people who are disabled. So that, okay, and they go out and give them jobs mm -hmm. that they should live in society the way everybody else does. Right. Uh, during the storm in the Red Cross shelter, December 12th to December 17th, a deputy sheriff confirmed that an unattended death has to be reported to the sheriff. The deputy sheriff comes to the site and talks to the coroner, I think, talk to the coroner. Uh, yes, this is an unattended death. Right. I don't have a doctor, and I don't intend to have one. And an unattended death in New York usually means an autopsy. Mm -hmm. We have to prevent the autopsy because that will ruin the body for the New York Medical right, College. Right, right. 
in the sheriff's office there. That's that was attempted the list that was crossed the off. The coroner lives in Valencia. Do you know him? His name is Nero. I don't. What is his first name? Nero. Everybody knows him. He lives in a coroner, by the way. Uh, when he came for Franklin's death, uh, I thought that he was a doctor. And he says, no. He says, we are lay people. He says, coroners are elected officials. Mm -hmm. You knew that, huh? Yeah. I thought they were doctors. And no, they are elected. They can or cannot be a doctor. Which is kind of strange to me, but mm -hmm. so it goes. This is Franklin's it's death certificate, definitely. and this is what yours is going to look like, and it will be in Stuyvesant Falls. Mm -hmm. It's right over Route 26, you know? Um, you know, it's between the two entrances to Sunnyside. It's Route 9, Route 26 going to Stuyvesant. Yes. Okay, let me tell you. You go out to the end of this road, Yang Deans, and you turn left, and you'll see Route 26. Turn down Route 26, that's the town hall. Okay. And that's right. where the, also the uh, funeral director got this for Franklin. I don't, I think the funeral director does provide death certificates, I'm not sure. Mm. Anyway, it costs about $10. Mm. Bring it home and make it on the copy. And you'll need right. about 10 copies. You'll need it for various things. You'll need it for Social Security. Right. You'll have to see it. You'll need it for principal finance, and you'll need it for Jeanette. Hmm. This is how Chatham sent it to me from Chatham Town Hall. Hmm. That's that's it. It's not the end of this file. Okay, it is. Yeah. It's not the end of it, but look, you're right up to page forty-eight. Yep. It's almost the end of it. Did you have any questions or any changes? Not Any particularly. Okay. Not the answered questions we went along anyway, so. Uh, so I'll continue it. Yep. Maybe next week it will be done, and then we'll start printing it. And we'll start mailing it out. I mail it out with a piece of paper that says, I have read uh, Glendora's guide instructions in the name and address and telephone number. And with a self address envelope. Mm -hmm. and, I, and you saw my mailing list. Right. Put this back in. Now oh, wait a second, honey. Oh. Here. Oh right, that would help. in address, page 28, die instructions. You did that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And Susan Canfield, you did that. And you did your fan letters. Friday, November 26th at 3 p.m. Because of Thanksgiving? Because of Thanksgiving. Uh, address list. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, the address list you gave me last week was beautiful. Telephone what? Telephone, I don't know. telephone you, I did. Oh. Archives 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Thank you for address list. It's a thing of beauty. Uh, find DBC. I might find it. You might find it? Yeah, you said it could have gone into I, the. Oh, yeah, it could have been one of the ones that ended up being sent. Yes, I haven't found it now. Friday at 3 p.m. or 1 p.m. Uh, thank you. For the East, November the 12th. Um, quads except for eight. Oh, yes, I'll tell you again. All the quads are done for January. Right, right. Tell me last week, yeah. That's ahead of the game. Except for maybe six. Right. Most, and yeah, I told one, you the policy is as long as I'm making them, just keep making them. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever's going to work. Uh, thanks again. Think again. Can you do... I can't. What was it about? From the uh, camera, the character generator 
to the computer hard drive. Oh, to YouTube. yeah. And did you ever talk to anybody about that? Well, I haven't been to class since then. Yeah. I'll ask Dan and uh, but, but again, no one in class is going to know about that because they don't teach that or anything <laughs> relating to it. But I also know myself, it's not, it's not a doable situation. But. Wouldn't it be great? Because that means we'd cut out a step. Mm hmm. Uh, copy of your address list. Uh, what's that? I think you covered, this is what I talked to her on the phone about. No receipt, you took care of that. No change, you took care of that. Errands list. You don't have an errands list. Anyway, yeah, what happened to, there was one thing, oh, what happened to Fairpoint? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't gone back. No, because I, I went to Fairpoint the first day uh, I went up for the errands. And they said, oh, well, uh, actually, we don't have those ready yet. They're still wherever they were. Oh, okay. Something. So come back on Monday. But I haven't been back. Oh, okay. So I guess they are ready. They've probably been ready for a few days okay, now. Okay, if you're driving around the town. No, tomorrow they're closed. Tomorrow's the end. If you're driving so around. So Monday again. Yeah, if you're around Monday. Be, right, right. So that means they've probably been there for a few days now. They just weren't there that day. Covered it all. When the computer is blocking, you took care of that. In my safari, somebody moved it. A report port card for Glendora. Okay, I'll do something. Uh, got the timer. You know how to set the timer? Just set it for, for I set it for uh, three minutes. One. Two, three, that's all, and then press this to start it. Okay. Is it running? Yep. Okay. I'm going down to Safari. Oh, this is good. I haven't seen this for a week. Devon's last program. Excuse me. And you used my numbers, did you, Devon? Those are the numbers you had for those archives, yes. Oh, thank you so much. Now this is one, two, three, and four. Isn't that lovely? I know you used my numbers very good. Okay, I'm trying to get a good grade here. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a nice picture. Oh, that's nice. Let's see if I can get the audio. I love this. This tells us so much. And now let's see if I can get audio. I might have done something to the audio, and so I go down. Not, it's not moving. So Andrew says go put it on a blank space. And I can't find a blank space to make it move. Yeah, Andrew, that's right. Now the audio. Mr. McConnell told me to go over here. That's not the thing about it. I hear it. It's a little symbol. It's a little symbol for the bull, little horn there. It's next to the pause button. This? No. To the right of it, yes. There's a symbol there? Above it, above it. Up, up, up. That's it. Oh, and what's that symbol? Pause? That's pause. That'll pause the video. And Devin says this is the audio. Yeah, it did get louder. Not loud enough. And it went to full screen, so you have to mm -hmm. go, you have to take it back, I think. Yep. And now, uh, oh, I pushed it to the side, isn't that fun? See, that's fun, now I don't know how to push it back. Oh, there he goes. But that's not what we want. This symbol right here is what Devin said for audio. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's up all the way now. Okay, now why don't I hear it? 
No, the computer itself might be turned down a bit. That's it. I get a grade. Let's see. I was going to say... I was going to say A minus, but we kind of timed out when we were doing something. I was going to say B plus then. B plus, okay. Because you had it all down, it was just getting to it. It's better. I was absolutely, you got in and out of full screen like that. It's impressive. <laughs> well, that's good. Now, I don't have the audio, so what should I do? It just probably needs to be turned up here. Well, that turns it up also. The YouTube turns up and down, oh, okay. and that's how loud YouTube is yeah, specifically. Or oh, the whole great computer. audio. Oh, that's terrific audio. <clears throat> that's much better. And the audio on the Acer was never very good. Well, thank you. Yep. And I got a B plus. Thanks. Report card. Copy address this one half hour TV station. And that's what you tried to do when you ran on ink. And we're yeah. going to solve that because we buy more ink. Sure, yeah, yeah, we'll need. Yep, I don't think I have any cartridges left. Yeah, I'm going to have to get that this week. Uh, the Gondor Happy Book, uh, Copy Glenn Draft, Archives, 15, uh, DC TV, Lots of Discs, we went over that, December 18th, uh, are you going with me to the London? I think I am, yeah. We'll what talk about that last week. Uh, what is that, Saturday? Saturday? Mm -hmm. It's going to be Saturday for you. Sure. Yeah. What time do you want? It doesn't matter what time do you usually go there. Whatever you say. You want to do it early? It's 11? If you do. Sure. That's what you want? Why not? <laughs> well, let's get this in the morning. <laughs> Expenses into the book. We did that. GHB Master. Uh, test Games Computer. Five minutes. Uh, Victoria. I called Victoria and told her to call me. I said it's an extreme emergency. She finally did. She had a phone turned on. Call me with her. Oh, the next day, today, uh, I said, uh, I was with Mr. Clampett down in Hudson, and I said, Victoria, it's all right, the, uh, the museum is gone. And, <laughs> and I said, it's a very interesting story, nothing to worry about, it's remedied, and I call her Sunday at 7 p.m. in Washington, D.C. Read two pages of, into... Microcassette. You have such a good voice. You want to do that? What? Uh, okay. Here's the microcassette. And you see number four there? Is that number four? Yes. You have such a good voice. Okay. We'll make it one page. Put that in here if you would. And it would be, uh, I can tell you which side it is, but it's in one page. This tape is funny. It starts. Uh, look at Victoria. She's asking you what can she offer you. No, no, no. Yeah. Yep. Last week. Yep. This tape uh, goes that way. It's the opposite of what you think it would be. By the way, my other one. It's worn out. I mean, Try cleaning the heads with isopropyl, and it's gone. I mean, so I want a new one of these. This one it, doesn't work. This one works. It's oh, brand new. The second one. The, one. the other one, the first one, just like this, is worn out. So when you go to Walmart, December fourth. What do you do with two? Well, one I use to record the uh, thing you're going to record, the uh, chini, and. And the other one I use for telephone conversation. Oh, okay. Okay, now if you would get down there in the bottom drawer, you will find that chain thing. It's in mm -hmm. a polka dot folder.
failure. The party from the burning place again. The everything is cold by the Lord himself. Okay, this page. That. Can you see you got in the And talking about this page. Page 78. Page 78. They preach in council, but they administer no sacraments. Lay members are their own guides. A light has been kindled within. Be a lamp unto yourself, said the Blessed One. There is no savior, no lifting of the burden of sorrow and mortality by an outward agency. The Buddha does not bring deliverance. He has shown the path. The pilgrim's own effort leads to emancipation. Since there is either God nor savior, nor the intercessors of the Christian Church, there is no worship. Especially forbidden is sacrifice. Penances and all forms of self-mortification are discouraged as morbid and a peril to the health of the mind as of the body. Departing from the Brahm faith, again, is the disbelief in a persisting self. The soul at the end of a series of rebirths, at the end of a succession of lives, is extinguished in the boundless light of nirvana. It is here that both Brahm thought and Western thought pause, hesitating to follow into a realm where the individual soul loses personal identity. The Buddha expressed it, roughly speaking, this way. The self has no more abiding reality than the other appurtenances of mortality. As long as you are thinking of it as yourself, you are holding to a thing that cannot survive. Right. There is, nevertheless, something representing immortality in you, nameless, unnameable, indescribable, inexpressible, and this returns to the ocean of immortality. Or again, if one renounces worldly life for a holy life only in the hope of a personal self surviving to right. enjoy rewards in eternity, one is substituting one form of mortal caving, craving yes. for another. Absolutely. Full extinction of self and a conception of the soul as so intangible and impersonal that at death it disappears in the absolute as candlelight disappears in the effulgence of sunlight. This, the Buddhists say, is necessary to the passing from worldliness into immortality. The average man, empowered by the Lord that is self, lives a life in slavery to senses. But the self, the ego, like the senses and their craving, is a part of the mortal existence, subject to change, illusory, to be denied. In debate with Abraham, who defended worship and sacrifice, the master said, The sacrifice of self is more effective than the offering of bullocks. He who offers up his evil desires need spill no blood at the altar. That's the nice. cleaving to self is a continuous dying. Good for him. Existence in the truth is a partaking of life unchanging of nirvana. Oh, I love it. That's excellent. Thank you. What page was that? 78. Thank you very much. Let me give you this back before it gets erased. That was good. I liked it. Very nice. Uh, Devin, I have a decision. You remember we had a moratorium on expanding a chat with Glendora after uh, Connecticut? Uh, okay. Uh, the moratorium's almost up, and I decided instead of going and mending the fences in the little places in Maine, uh, New Hampshire, and Maryland, instead of mending fences there, I'll go on with our plan to do the top 15 markets, of which we have half of them. And the next market is the third market in the United States, Chicago. So I started working on that, and here was my aflatus. Uh, as to that, I called the Buddha Center in Chicago, and I found out that they are in the Chicago limit. You have to be CAN TV, which is Chicago Access Network Television, uh, covers only Chicago, nothing outside of it. So I found out that they are within six miles of the public access TV station, so they're in their coverage area. And I left a message on the Buddhist temple in Chicago to do a program with me on Buddha. We could do it over the telephone or we could do it over Skype. And they would be our local sponsor. But what I'm getting at is all these public access centers, you have to be able to have a local resident. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a great idea? Mm -hmm. To do our Chicago? That works, yeah. If it works, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where the next expansion's going to be. 
where we're working on that. Straight Talk is doing great, Devin. I can delete things. I clean it all up. I'm really, I know how to call you on it. Good. I got all of the trust, most of the trustees in there. The total YouTube is 1522. Can you remember that? Fantastic. Peanut butter, I told, asked you about. Yeah. Did you like the peanut butter? Uh, practice the disc to the hard drive. Okay, I gotta do it. I'm gonna use this little disc that's in here. Sure. And uh, I'm going to clear this. So I go up to uh, that and clear it. And then I clear the uh, Magic Jack. Why is Magic Jack here twice? I don't know. Okay. Oh, guess what? Away, I guess. Magic Jack came up with a thing yesterday, Black Friday special. Get Magic Jack for your friends, twenty nine ninety five. I paid forty five for it. Hmm. What a deal! That's handy. One day only. Uh, okay, I want you on here, so I'll try this. It's the X, yep. And a little to the left. There it is. And now I go up to Winky Dink. It's called Win X, right? Yep. And I go there. Twice. There he is. And I wait for him to do what he wants to do. And I go up to here. Yep. That's, I, I can't I think, read what it's I, Yeah, DVD disc, yeah, yep. I think so. Yep. I suppose. Yep. I go there. And uh, yes, yes, that would that would be correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to come up. Mm. He's going to play. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I go over to this circle. And make it red. Yep, it is, yes. It is red. It is red. I don't have to do anything. Uh-huh. It's okay. selected, yep. Now, I think that's when you go over to the big start button. Right, start button, which I can't reach. Yeah, we can reach it. Andrew says to go down to some place that's white, and then it'll go over for you. Okay. Come on, Glenn. Oh, there he goes. Uh -huh. Yep. There he is. And stretch it over and then go down. And to go down. And I gotta find the big Oh no, you gotta put in one of these things, Devin. What do you like? MP4. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. I think. Now here he is. There you go. There you go. And all I have to do is start him. Mm-hmm. Is that a one or a two? One. Okay. Okay, so that looks looks doable. That's it, going. isn't it? Mm -hmm. He started, didn't he? Yep, it's going, it's going. I gotta get an A for that, don't I? Yes. That worked just or fine. Or A minus. That one worked. And uh, that's uh, disk to hard drive. Now, when that's done, we'll go hard drive to we'll go uh, hard drive to YouTube. Hey, that's pretty good, Devin. Victoria would be proud of me. And Andrew, too. What's that say? What's that mean? That means it's putting down the file for what you just made. And then he means he's I, done? I believe. Ah, uh, well, let me see. I didn't see that happen, so let me see what it says. I saw this. Yes, it is. That means it is done. So that means it's right there. So that okay. means it's good. Now 